Hey everyone, Jaystiver here today with a bit of a flashback on a hobby that I used to love doing back in the 90s. I used to love doing electronic and woodwork. So what you're looking at here is a sample of what I have. I have three semi and fully home built radios. Yes, and they all look rather old school, like the old fashioned consoles you'd see back in the 60s and 70s. So I want to start with this little guy on the left. This is an AM FM radio. Got a jack on the back for a wall wart transformer and a dipole antenna. Spot on the bottom for batteries. What I can remember, these would take about two weeks to put together from start to finish. I've had several revisions in the past. This is one of my favorites. I believe I built this one back in 1993. So, what would that make it? 24 years old? So I'm assuming that obviously the tuner and the volume control are going to need to be cleaned. It's just a dial tuner. I believe this was salvaged from an old clock radio. The clock didn't work so I pulled out the rail. The rail back at that time was really sensitive. This thing was a performer. I'd like to get this one restored. I'd like to end up making a new version of this though with digital tuning. I actually have a radio insert that would fit in this and I never got around to actually building another model. I kind of fell in out of love with the electronics builds at the time so I have projects that are still <laughs> semi-finished. So I'd really like to build another version and uh, the version I wanted to build was going to have two smaller speakers for stereo sound. Just never got around to it. So this is just a mono radio and, and, and surprisingly I do have a large three inch speaker in there. Now this one here it's another AM FM radio. This one is fully digital meaning that it's fully push button, solid state. Uh, the only thing I can remember what was wrong with this was the AM FM switch was intermittent. Large three inch speaker. This is an LCD display. This was from a kit. That This rail was tough to align and stuff. You had to build your own circuit then you had to align it. Not very fun. Uh, this one here has the channel and volume. Everything is push button. The original version of the radio had a rotary volume control but I wanted to make it push button so I ended up putting a digital volume pot in there. This is obviously photo finished with a piece of a laminate on the front. So here's the back. We've got a spot for batteries and a dipole antenna. On the side we have a jack for a wall wart transformer and a headphone jack. Now what makes this radio special is that it is capable of receiving uh, subcarrier frequencies and those would be like for background music, um, um, reading for the blind, all that stuff. So this rail is capable of picking that up. You used to have, you would get this uh, service like you could buy a radio or something from I don't know I think you can get it from the Library of Congress or something and you can be able to tune in to like I think it's 88.1 or 88.9 the last time I remembered that you can pick up and you can hear you know somebody that you know I'm trying to remember if it was Valley Public Radio or something and they would read the newspaper you know if you had a a vision impairment so they would read you the newspaper and stuff on here and I remember I picked it up a few times it's pretty cool um, so this is a really nice radio I don't think there'll be needing to be too much done with it 
Now this rail in here is supposed to look like a miniature console. This thing is heavy. This is all oak. All these rails are oak. Uh, top does open up. I have a knob that obviously came off. This radio is a turd. About 20 years ago I built this and it worked fine and I powered it up like five years ago and it is dead as a doornail. I did get static out of the speakers. However, that's as far as it went. AM's death and FM only picks up one station, so I don't know if it's a bad electrolytic. Uh, might need to be realigned. I don't know. But this one here is pretty much a full-built radio. Uh, you know, probably some cheapo, you know, cheesy old China made capacitors that don't have to be swapped out. But it is fully stereo. I got two speakers, you know, one here and one here. Um, originally, this rail was supposed to have a light inside the lid. I never put one in there. Take a look at the back. There's the back. We have a spot here for external 300 ohm FM antenna spot for a Walmart transformer and a spot to plug in AC. Now this model does take batteries surprisingly so let's just pop open the back just to slide out so I can just pop this out you can see a perf board inside. <laughs> uh, so this unit you know homemade battery compartment too um, but you know, it works. It, it worked. At, it, it, this used to sit by my bed because I used to listen to um, these old radio. They used to have a station where I used to live, and they would air the old time radio, um, like what they used to call those, where they would you know it's like it's like a movie, but you listen to it. And I used to listen to those at night on this radio. It was so cool because I'd have this sitting by my bed, surprisingly. I, I wasn't a normal kid with a boombox. I just had this and, you know, I would have it tuned and just sit there and fall asleep listening to the uh, radio shows. And there was also another, you know, a few talk shows I would listen to at night and stuff like that. Um... I believe this one was built in 1993, 1994. This one here, I know, was built probably in 1998, 1999. And a lot of these were just projects. Like this one, obviously, was electronics class. Then I would take it over to a wood shop and build a cabinet for it. Same with this one. Electronics class, then wood shop. This one I built here at the house. So that's pretty much about it for my homemade radio collection. I have another one that I cannot find, and I also have a small I also have a small little LCD TV. It's the same as this. Except the controls are in here and then there's a LCD panel in the front. It's meant to look like a old school console television that you'd find back in the 70s. So, I'm thinking of testing these out, probably in a later video, and seeing how I'm going to approach this. I'd like to get these fully operational and back into service. Um, this one here I know is a good performer. I think the tuner in the volume is scratchy. This one in the back obviously is dead, so that's going to be my main focus. Now, if I go about doing this, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to have to realign the one in the back, so I'm going to have to bring out my signal generator and... Oh! <laughs> and with uh, very little service info since these are home built, that's going to be tough. So I'm going to have to, uh, you know, tinker around with the one in the back. But I'd like to get these all fully functional and tip-top condition because I'd like to display these again fully functioning in my house. I don't want them just sitting in storage or in a closet somewhere. And this one here actually took the time to make a protective case for it. 
a nice foam case. So the radio just sits inside there. And I even have a top that goes on it. Pretty cool. But yeah, I'd like to get that working again. I'd, I, I'm starting to get back into electronic. I'm into the electronic and computer science uh, groups. You know, vintage electronics and modern electronics, such as solid state electronics repair and restoration, and also tube stuff. I also have a few tube TVs I need to bring out and a couple of tube radios. Maybe we can poke around at those and see if we can get those working. Now, as far as my equipment, though, is it's in storage. I haven't got it out yet. I, you know, i got to get around to doing that. So that's just a first look at some vintage, or not vintage, homemade radios, I should say. And maybe we can just kind of explore these a bit and maybe get them working. Just as a fair note, though, uh, some people say I talk too slow in my Lego videos. Well, this, fixing stuff like this, and documenting all the video, uh, it's going to be a long video, so I might talk slow on these. This is a fair warning. So I'll see if I can find a few more of these in storage, and I'll bring them out and show them as I go. Um, at least they're not Crosley, <laughs> that new modern Crosley crap that you get from China. I'm sorry, I just don't like China shit. I just can't. Yeah, I, I, I'd rather build. I'd rather build my own electronic stuff and know it's going to last for 20 years, you know. But you know, we'll see what happens. I'd like to get these working and test everything out and just put them on display instead of just having them sitting collecting dust. So look look out for these, and we'll have to kind of do an exploration on these units. See how we can get them to perform better. Thank you for watching.